You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon, and I'm delighted to say that the international break is over and we've got some Premier League football to look forward to. Arsenal take on Crystal Palace at the Emirates Stadium on Monday night. We've got to wait all the way till Monday to see Arsenal back in action, but very much looking forward to it. And as part of our build-up towards the game, I decided to invite on a very, very special guest. Uh, You've seen him on the Chronicles of Aguna before. Welcome back to the show, Harvey from the Red and Blue site. Harvey, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, very good, mate. Thank you for having me. No, it's a pleasure, mate. And it's always great to get the kind of opposition view and a bit of a download on the, the opponents that we're facing this weekend. Of course, for Arsenal fans... I don't want to say it has a special edge because it's not an edge. There's not an anger. There's not a, you know, a kind of animosity there towards him. But obviously there's extra interest because Patrick Vieira will be coming back to the Emirates Stadium. An Arsenal legend for me, you know, easily in Arsenal's top three greatest of all time players. um, Went away, started his managerial career. I think there have been some question marks about Patrick Vieira up until now from a managerial perspective. He's somebody that was linked with the Arsenal job, naturally, given the fact that he has such a strong affiliation with the club. He's at Crystal Palace now, Harvey. How's it gone so far? And I guess if we start right at the beginning, when you heard that Roy Hodgson was leaving, who had been at the club for a long, long time, who'd been part of the furniture at Crystal Palace and brought some stability, you have to say, um, when you heard that Roy Hodgson was leaving and Patrick Vieira was going to replace him, what was your initial reaction to that news? Um, well, first of all, I think in terms of Roy Hodgson and his position at the club, I think that I think the Palace fan base as a whole knew it was really the time for him to go. Um, obviously, there's a certain amount of risk that comes with that because as long as Roy was at the club, you really felt we would stay up. Um, the problem was, you know, we had an ageing squad. We had the oldest manager in the Premier, in Premier League history as well at, at the end of last season. Um, the all question always was going to be was the next step for Palace. Like you couldn't see Roy Hodgson being at the forefront of the next uh, the next journey for us, if you like, the next step to take, which is going up the league, hopefully being a more um, more stable mid-table side and looking to push into the top 10. You never really felt that that was going to be the case. So I think it was the right time for Roy to go. And I'm happy that the club didn't just straight up sack him, which a lot of people were calling for uh, earlier in, this, in last season. Um, I don't think that was the right thing to do at all. Um, what I did find um, silly, if you like, was the fact that we did, we let him go and we didn't really have a lineup, ready-made lineup there to bring in straight away. Um, I was expecting within a week or two of Hodgson um, announcing that he was leaving the club that we would be announcing a new manager. That wasn't the case, of course. And very similar to Spurs in the in the summer window, we had a massive merry, merry-go-round with managers. Um, Nuno, of course, was literally on the verge of signing for Palace and then talks broke down at the last uh, at the last minute. Um, he ends up obviously going to Spurs. Uh, Lucien Favre, of, of course, he was in a very similar situation, very close to signing and things. I, and that's even more of a mystery how that one broke down because it looked literally like the, everything was signed up, ready to go. Um, then all of a sudden that's broken down. And you just think that we're less than three or four weeks away from going into the pre-season. Um, and you're thinking, right, this is this isn't looking good now. Um, and then all of a sudden, obviously, we hear the rumours on on uh, Patrick Vieira. He obviously put, he must have had good contact with the club and um, Steve Parrish, the chairman, and put his name forward. And I'll admit, when he signed, I really did think that okay, we could be in trouble this season because he's obviously not the first choice manager. He was <laughs> down the pecking order, let's say. Um, I don't think that. In the summer, obviously, he was doing work with, I believe, ITV, BBC um, during the Euros. And I don't think he was expecting a, 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 this move to Palace at all. I don't think he was in the frame of mind where he thought, right, I've got a move. A, a, my next managerial step is coming up here. Um, and obviously, it's the biggest move of his career coming to the Premier League. So I think it was a massive, massive risk from the club at the time. Um, and I did fear the worst when he came in, I'll be honest. Um, but 
it's probably the preseason that I've really looked at and analysed the most because I've really been, I really wanted to see what there's a lot of, obviously, in what uh, Vieira did at Nice and style of football that he brings. I was really interested to see how that would translate into the Premier League and with the players that we have and whether or not he can do a rebuild with the, those tactics as well because we had the oldest um, team in the Premier League last season as well and needed to bring in new players. So there was so much that had to happen in such a short space of time. It looked like things were going to be really tricky. But as the preseason went on and you saw what he was trying to do, the confidence did grow in me. I, I know some Palace fans even now are still not too sure um, if it's going to work long term. But I think from game by game, week by week, I've just seen improvement in the squad. The players are the, that we've signed were the right signings. I'd literally say it was a almost a perfect window. Maybe a backup winger is all it was. Uh, is the signing away from being a 10 out of 10 window. Um, and... I think the the results we should have more points than we have at the moment, which is you know with the start to the season we've had is actually you know quite impressive I think and things are looking good at the moment uh, and it's a real credit to Vieira and actually and and the backroom backroom staff at Palace to get this turnaround happening in such a short space of time really. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned there that Palace probably should have more points than they do on the board. Fourteenth in the league at the moment going into this one, one just one of your fixtures, four draws along the way and two defeats. But at this stage, Harvey, where it is still, you know, the very early part of the season, you can take more heart from the performances, can't you? And and you can look at the bigger picture at this point rather than kind of getting it obsessed with results. That will come later on, won't it? The need for points. But right 100%. now, it's, it's about showing signs of improvement and showing signs of the direction in which Patrick Vieira is going to take you guys. What is different about Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace in comparison to Crystal Palace side to the past, do you think? What stands out? Oh, it stands out to me is, the, I think, the energy. Um, I think Palace have always had a certain amount of energy in, in probably more associated with bigger games. Um, you'd see it normally. We, we normally go each season with one or two really big shock results that people aren't expecting. And that is because we do tend to turn up in the bigger games, especially away from home. Um but across the course of the season, especially last season, when obviously it was clear that Roy was coming to the end of his time at the club, um, there was we were one of the worst running sides in the league in terms of distance covered. And with an ageing squad, it was clear that we were getting dominated in just, just pure passion and desire on the pitch. It, it came across anyway as a, as a fan. Um, and the running stats backed that up. And also, the I think, we wouldn't say it's a nervous a nervous approach to the game, but it felt very much like it was just a uh, two bang, you know, old fashioned two banks of four and just soak up every pressure. And that was in every game. Um, we'd be playing, I don't know, Brighton, obviously it was a big game for us. And, but you play a team like Brighton or a team that Bur- Burnley, for example, and you'd let them have the ball, soak up the, pr- and soak up the pressure. And then when we did get the ball, what we're, Famous in the in the years gone by for having really good quick counter attacks. That or that in, in terms of Palace history, we're very that's a big trait for Palace is quick counter attacking, flary wingers. You know, and we showed none of that last season. This season, though, uh, Vieira just turned it all around. I think the players coming in, uh, Conor Gallagher, so far been our player of the season. I'd say he's been unbelievable with the amount of energy and the, the composure for such a young player in the midfield, especially after an average season. I'd say at West Brom last season. Um, I think he's just turned it round, and that experience. I think we West Brom must have been. I think is vital for the, his improvement in the league this year. Um, and players like him, um, Elise, obviously got his uh, first uh, goal against Leicester as well before the international break, and he's someone who's had very little minutes, but he was the FL young player of the season in the championship last season. And you know the, these young players with so much potential coming through the um, Anderson and Gay at the back line. Um, they're really good signings and, sh- and shows the progression that we're looking to have going forward, a long-term goal, long-term vision. Now, now it's dropped the average age of the squad down considerably and the, just all of these players bring so much energy and you always feel like even when we're 1-2-0 we down, we're always in with a shot. Whilst last season it was the case that, you know, against Leicester, for example, we went 2-0 down in, in you know quick succession just before our time and you knew that that game was done. There was no way we were getting back in it. But this season... Obviously, the the results showed that we can turn it around, and you feel like that is always going to be the case in every game we play, and that's something that's you know applaud the players and the staff for doing that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Patrick Vieira has brought, as we said, a very different style to the club. Am I right in saying that as long as Crystal Palace steer well clear 
of the drop zone and you keep seeing progress in terms of the style of play, in terms of where you're going in the longer term, that the Palace fans will probably be satisfied with that? Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, well, especially in the situation we were when he came in, I think that everyone would have ripped your arm off to just stay up this season. I know that's a bit of a, you know, you're con- contradicting myself slightly. Obviously, when you look at people being unhappy with staying just, just staying up last season under Roy, but obviously it's different scenarios, different circumstances. There's a lot of change all at once at the club, um, not just on the pitch, but behind the scenes as well. So I think first and foremost, the goal is staying up. And we know seven points from seven games could be a lot more than that. But I think that just shows the progression we've made in such a short space of time. Um, I think a lot of fans are going to be happy with it. And, you know, going into the Arsenal game, of course, so that everyone feels confident that we can at least come away with their, with a very good performance and hopefully points to show. Because, you know, down the in the previous seasons, we've had some good performances there and come away with points at the Emirates. So I think there's a lot of, it's just a happy place to be at the moment, Palace. A lot of energy amongst the fan base as well, and a lot of positive energy as well. What do you expect to happen then come, come Monday night? Because <laughs> I, as I said in the intro, feels like we've got an absolute age to wait until our teams are back in action. And this international break has felt a lot more painful than than the ones prior to it. I don't know why, but it just has for me, especially. Um, what what do you think Palace can can take away from the game? You mentioned the, the kind of desire to see a good performance and, you know, to come away with something. You know, that's anybody goes into any game feeling that way and wanting those things. But... What do you think is a realistic outcome for Crystal Palace here? How highly do you rate their chances of of nicking a point or, or maybe even all three at the Emirates come Monday? I think there's a good chance. I think there's a good chance we come away with a point. Um, I, I'm never, I'm never confident, no matter how well we're playing, of saying we're going to get, we're going to win a game away to any of the like the big six. Um, I love the way you did this for the big, because <laughs> we're not. Well, it, it's changed a lot, hasn't it, in recent years? Let's be honest. So, I could, you know, the the typical so-called big, you know, uh, which Arsenal definitely is still part of, but uh, maybe not so much on the pitch nowadays. But you know, I, I do feel the way we're playing and. And it goes back to what I said, even when we go ahead in a game, when we're 1-0 up and typically we, you would see a team like Palace or someone in around us in the table sit back and like hold on to that. You just feel we're just going to keep playing the same way and there's no fear at 1-0 to just hold on to what we have. You, Biera encourages the players to, if anything, step it up a level, which is a typical top team mentality. You see teams then push on and get trying to improve their lead. And it's something I'm not used to seeing. So, it's a, it, again, that goes back to it being very exciting. And that's why I think against Arsenal, especially when we've had success there in previous years, just by, I think, just by out, out not necessarily outperforming in terms of like the, the quality of players, but I think just having the out outperforming in terms of energy and desire on the pitch to like win that second ball, to get that 50-50. I think we've shown that against Arsenal, especially at the Emirates in recent years, and which is why we, we've come away with points there quite often. Um, and I think just the, the way Vieira is playing, the style of football will just improve that side of side of the game if you like it, it really t- it really all depends in my opinion how Arsenal will come and play because if you play the way you did against Spurs of course then obviously it's going to be a very tricky game for us but I think it's that inconsistency um, which I'm used to seeing from Palace but not so much this season we have been a consistent side in our performances which is re- really good to see um, but with Arsenal you, you're still got that you know it's still unpredictable you know I don't really know how you're going to approach a game especially against Palace will you have the desire necessarily to go out there and steamroll a team like us. I feel like you should have that because of the status of the, the, the club and how big you, big Arsenal is as a club and, and the history of it. But it, it just doesn't feel like that, you know, at the moment. It doesn't feel like the, the players are always up for the game. Um, so it all depends how Arsenal come out, in my opinion. And after the first five, ten minutes, we'll probably have a good idea of how the rest of the game will pan out. Yeah, you're spot on. We don't know what Arsenal side is going to come out <laughs> week in, week out. And that's the really frustrating thing about the last 18 months or so, there have been games where you've looked at them and gone, OK, you know, we can work with this. This is a, a, a basis from which we can hopefully build and, and hopefully push forward. And then we hit brick walls and then we seem like we're going backwards and then we kind of steady the ship again. And every time it feels like Mikel Arteta is on the cusp of getting the bullet, then he pulls a couple of results out of the bag. You know, he's three wins and a draw in his last four Premier League games. And all of a sudden things are looking very, very different. So, yeah, um, you know, it's going to be a very difficult game to predict. I, I completely agree with that. If you were to say, though, or, or, or were to identify a couple of weaknesses or even just one weakness in this Crystal Palace side, if, if you were the Arsenal boss, Harvey, looking at it, what would you say is the area that 
or the particular thing that Mikel Arteta should be looking at as a way of potentially exposing Vieira's palace? Um, it's a good question. Um, and I'm, I'm not just stalling on this because I think we're amazing and there's no flaws in this. I just genuinely think we've been playing well at the moment. So it's hard to... I'd probably say um, as good as um, Gay and Anderson have been as a centre-back partnership, so good on the ball, so good at soaking up pressure and playing that out ball that, um, and keeping possession... Um, they have made a few mistakes, um, which is expected at their age and obviously new to the club. It takes time for that to that you know um, consistency to come as a partnership. So I'd say you know quick one touch passes around the, that area um, with runs in behind. You know trying to get the defenders running the other way rather than you know balls over the top, which are easy to then defend and let the defenders check their shoulder and just deal with. They're very good at that. So playing in front of the defense, quick one touch passes in behind. And I'd have to say Vincente Gaeta in goal as well was our player of the season um, last season, but he started quite poorly this season. A couple of errors, I think, from corners. He loves to punch the ball, which has become a thing that he didn't usually do, but a lot of mistimed punches as well. And it does, you know, it, it causes nerves in the box for, as a defending team. So, you know, just getting at those corners, testing the keeper, because I think at the moment there is an error in him. So hopefully that doesn't happen on Monday night for us. But, you know, just testing the back, the, those two centre-backs in front of them and making them think a bit more and, you know, getting at the goalkeeper. But on all other areas of the pitch, like, uh, I just feel like we're in such a good mental state and like a, a, in terms of perform not just performance, but, you know, mentally as a team, we're playing so well and the, you know, the, the unity as well and the players and the camaraderie that all those you know typical cliche things you hear but it's just great to, it's great to see on the pitch so it, it's it's very good side at the moment I think I know the answer to this but would you say that Crystal Palace play with a higher line under Patrick Vieira now with with Anderson and Gray at the back and and is that why you feel like if Arsenal can work the ball in behind those guys and get runners in behind they could cause them problems yeah, 100%. Um, and Leicester were, managed to catch us out on that um, brilliantly. Uh, I say brilliantly. It was quite fortunate how the goals came about, but they capitalised on it, which is what you know a good what good teams do. Um, yeah, absolutely right. We are playing much higher up the pitch. Usually, I'm, under Roy, we were expecting to see all 11 men in our own half for 80 minutes of the game. Um, but under Vieira, where we're having much more possession on the ball than we usually have, we're dictating possession in most of the games we play in. Um, we are seeing a much higher line and and the, the defenders naturally, Anderson being a ball-playing defender, did so well in the second half of last season for Fulham, Gay, captain of the under-21s for England. They're players that like to have the ball and are confident being higher up the pitch. Problem is when one of their play passes does get misplaced, which is very rare, but has happened on one or two occasions and happened for Leicester's first goal in our game um, not this weekend, the weekend before. Um, they capitalised on it quick, you know, pinched by Ian Atto and then he's in on net, obviously. So that risk of playing out from the back, that's always going to be the risk. And for a team like Palace, we're going to make more mistakes than a City, obviously, or a team that are used to playing that style. Arsenal, for example. Um, but it's, it's it's something I can, I can you know, if we do make that error, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be annoyed too annoyed with it because it's all part of the the process that we're trying to trying yeah. to make at the club, you know. Yeah, and that's something that we I think can relate to. You know, you you look at your defense and sometimes you know they give you a mini heart attack when they're playing the ball out from the back <laughs> and really trying to suck their opponents in. And and Arsenal do it a lot under Mikel Arteta. And sometimes you see the centre halves pretty much on the goal line waiting for the ball to try and drag people in, and and it does make you feel nervous. But as you say. It's one of those things where the manager will be well aware that that approach comes with a risk and the manager will obviously be disappointed if it goes wrong and if it leads to conceding a goal. But I think they'll accept that. And I think they prefer that their players do what it is that they want them to do and apply the kind of uh, approach that it is that they're looking for and, and yeah. accept that those mistakes will come rather than them completely abandoning it. So I think we can relate to that. My worry from an Arsenal perspective is... I don't think we've been good enough at getting runners in behind centre-halves this season. I think we've done it on a couple of occasions and when we have, we've looked really good. But I think the way we look to do it is is quite different. I think what we you'll see from us is you'll see our centre-forward drop into a deeper position, trying to bring the centre-halves with him and then opening the doors for whether that be Saka or Smith Rowe in the wide positions yeah. to make those diagonal runs from the wide positions in field and getting behind that way. 
And I think we don't do that as well when Aubameyang is the centre forward. When Lacazette plays there, we do that a little bit better. But with Lacazette, we have no threat in behind. So it's right. it's kind of really difficult for Mikel Arteta, I think, right now to find the balance between the two. I've been saying it for, for months. I think we need a hybrid between Lacazette and Oba to have <laughs> the best forward line that we can. But unfortunately, uh, strikers don't grow on trees. So uh, we are where we are. But Harvey, uh, thank you so much, mate. Really, really appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm going to get a prediction from you. But first of all, let everybody know how they can uh, keep up to date with the brilliant work you do around Crystal Palace. Cheers, mate. Yeah, of course. So the Red and Blue site, you can see down below, that's my Twitter handle. Um, Red and Blue site, YT as well is the YouTube channel. As Harry said, they're mainly Palace stuff, of course, but touching other teams and stuff like that. And, you know, previews, reviews, match vlogs at times, you know, things like that. So all that good stuff. So Twitter and YouTube, probably the main places to find me. Um, good stuff. Make sure you do check out Harvey's uh, channels. Uh, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So Harvey, to wrap up, Prediction for Arsenal versus Crystal Palace in the Premier League this coming Monday. I don't usually do this, but I am going to predict a 2-1 Palace win. Um, I just feel like we're in that state of mind. We should have got wins in both of our last uh, get the two games. They were both draws. I think both of them should have been wins. I feel like that big win is, you know, we had that against Spurs. We have the ability to do that against teams like Spurs or, it, you know, teams of that ilk. I think that, at the Emirates, we've had good fortune there in previous seasons. I'm feeling confident about it. And I don't usually predict an away win at all against sides like Arsenal, but I, I do feel confident. I don't know. I was going to say good stuff. And then I thought, no, it's not good stuff. Is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, look, I, you know, if, if you don't go into games feeling positive, then what's the point? So I, I get course. it. And, you know, as you say, Crystal Palace, the, the points kind of total so far doesn't necessarily reflect what their performances have been like. Um, I would like to wish Crystal Palace luck for the rest of the season after Monday, of course, <laughs> and the next time we meet. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but the, I'm buzzing to see Patrick back at the Emirates Stadium as well. So uh, nice little side story to this one uh, as well. Right, we're going to leave it there. We'll be back very soon with some more Arsenal and football related content. Until next time, take care and stay safe. All the best. Ciao. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening.